Okay, so this is the uh, lecture video for MT6 week one. Um, before you continue watching this, I recommend that you print off the, these notes that I'm going over. Uh, that way you can follow along and do the examples with me. Um, I also advise you to um, watch maybe like 10 minutes of the video at a time because um, usually we start to zone out after that much and just break it up, you know, however you would like. But I, I don't recommend trying to watch the whole thing at once. Um, it's probably better to watch a little bit at a time. So um, we have our objectives here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start get started. Number one, the expression 2 to the 6th power is called an exponential expression. It is also called the 6th power of 2. Um, or we say that 2 is raised to the 6th power. Alright, below here we have a little diagram of um, the different parts of an exponential expression. Um, the, I'm looking at the 2 to the 6 here. The 2 is called the base and the 6 is the exponent. So recall that 2 to the 6 means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 is multiplied um, 6 times. And then over here we have 8 to the 4th, so that we see that there's 8 4s um, being multiplied together. Or, sorry, 4 8s being multiplied together. Um, next we have some examples here, and uh, I have my... Um, TI-84 here, um, and this is the calculator that I recommend for you as well because if you're in, um, oops, didn't mean to make it that big. If you're in MT-6, that means that you're probably going to need um, some higher level mathematics. Um, so having going ahead and having the graphing calculator is going to is going to make sense for you. Um, but you should be able to do this part of it with a scientific calculator as well. So um, notice that you have a negative key uh, down at the bottom um, to the left of the enter key and then two keys above the enter key is a minus sign. So make sure that you're using the correct one. If you're trying to make a number negative you use the one in parentheses um, if you're trying to subtract, you use the subtraction. So for negative 3 squared, I would type negative 3 and then um, the little x squared key above the log. And then hit enter and we see that it's negative 9. Um, so let's see that, that compared to when we do negative 3 squared in parentheses. So I'm going to put it in exactly what it looks like on the paper. Negative 3 squared in parentheses, and that's positive 9. So I like to, to stress that because um, students often don't put this correctly in their calculator and they get negative 9 for both of them. But when it's in the parentheses, it means you're squaring the negative 2. Um, so a negative times a negative makes it positive. Um, to do a cube in your calculator, uh, it's going to be parentheses, negative 4, close your parentheses, and then I'm going to use the little caret button, the one right below the clear, and that gives me an exponent, and I'm going to type a 3, and then hit enter. So this one's a negative 64. Um, to do fractions in this calculator, no big deal at all. Again, just type it as you see it, and I'm going to use the divide button or symbol for um, making it a fraction, and then squared, and we get um, a nice little decimal here, and that's not what we want to put in for our answer, so you're going to hit the math key, and then just hit enter twice after that, and it'll make it a fraction for you. So this is 1 over 81. All right, and this last one here, I'm going to drag my calculator over so we can see it. Uh, I didn't mean to make it so huge. Okay, just drag you over. 
And uh, so we have a negative 4 and then times 3 caret 3. Enter. That one is negative 108. All right, we have some more examples here. <clears throat> Evaluate each expression given the replacement values for x. So we're, we're given x cubed and we're given that x is negative 2. So what that means is we want to put the negative 2. Um, whenever you're replacing a variable with a number, especially negatives, it's a good idea to put it in parentheses. So it's negative 2 to the third power, and that's negative 8. Um, then 4 times negative 1 squared. Well, negative 1 squared is just 1, and 4 times 1 would be 4. And this last one, negative 4 times 2 squared times negative 1 cubed. Well, that's going to be negative 4 times 4, and negative 1 cubed is also negative 1, so that's negative 16 times a negative 1, which is positive 16. All right, now we get to our first official rule for exponents, and that's the product rule. And um, it's saying that if we multiply the bases, and the bases are the same, that's important, then you're going to add the exponents. This is the most difficult of all the exponent rules for students to remember. So remember when you multiply like bases, then you add the exponents. All right, we got lots of examples here for you. y squared times y. Now even though you don't see it, there's a y to the first power there. So since we're multiplying the bases and they're the same, we're adding the 2 plus 1 and we're going to get y cubed. With B, our bases again are the same. So in my final answer, the base is going to stay the same. And we're going to add the 7 and 6, and we're going to get 13. Now we could take our calculator and do negative 5 to the, fifth, to the 13th power, and we're going to get some really big number. Um, well, actually, it's a really small number because it's negative, but it's not important right now. What's important is just understanding um, this rule. With C, um, we have, let's go ahead and take care of the negative 2 times the negative 2. So that's just 4. Then we're dealing with z cubed times z squared. Well, that would be z to the fifth power because 2 plus 3 is 5. When you have two variables, just do one at a time. a squared times a to the 13th. 2 plus 13 is 15. b times b to the 17th would be b to the 18th because this b with no exponent on it actually has an exponent of 1. Um, <clears throat> over with e, again we want to do the, these numbers first. Negative 7 times 7 is negative 49. a cubed times a to the 19th would be a to the 22nd. And then b cubed times b would be b to the fourth. Again, b didn't have an exponent on it, which means the exponent is 1. And finally, we have 12 um, x to the fifth times negative x to the sixth times x to the fourth. Well, the 12 um, and the negative make it negative 12. Okay, so it's like a negative 1. And then we're going to have x. 5 plus 6 is 11, plus another 4 would give me to the 15th. Uh, here's a little example um, with geometry. We have a parallelogram, and its base is 9y to the 7th meters, and its height is 2y to the 10th meters. Find its area as an expression in y. So area is given to you as base times height. So the area of this parallelogram is going to be the base 9y to the 7th meters times the height 2y to the 10th meters.
So 9 times 2 is 18. y to the 7th times y to the 10th is y to the 17th. And meters times meters gives you meters squared. So I like this problem example because um, if you remember with your geometry, if it's an area, then your units are going to be squared. And this is why. Um, because you have meters times meters, we know that those meters have an invisible exponent of 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's how we get the meters squared. Okay, our next rule of exponents is the power rule. And it just simply says that if you raise an exponent to an exponent, um, you've got to multiply them. So in 8a, 2 times 5 is 10, so this is x to the 10th power. b, 8 times 2 is 16, so it's y to the 16th power. And c, 4 times 3 is 12, so we get z to the 12th power. All right, and then powers of a product in a quotient is kind of the same thing, but it just says if it's in parentheses, you have to distribute it to both terms, whether it's um, being multiplied or divided. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, a is just simply y to the 12th, but b is going to be a to the 11th over t to the 11th. With C, we want to distribute that 6 to each one, so it'll be A to the 6, B to the 6. D is going to be X squared, Y squared, and then 7 squared is actually 49, so we're going to go ahead and, and write that out as 49. Alright, E gets a little more complicated, but just remember the 3 is being distributed to each one. And also remember that even though there's not an exponent there, on the x, it's a 1. So 3 times 1 would give you x cubed. And then 3 times 4 is 12, so it's y to the 12. And in the bottom, you have negative 3 to the third power. If you multiply that out, or if you use your calculator, you would see that's negative 27. And then 3 times 3 is 9, so we get z to the 9th. So it's not that bad, you just have to take it one, one thing at a time. With f, we're going to distribute that 2 to everybody, so it's 4 squared and then 6 times 2 is 12, and let's just make go ahead and make that 4 squared is 16. Alright, and g, it's going to be a to the 28th and b to the 7th. And h, negative 3 cubed again is negative 27. And then we're going to have x to the 21, y cubed, and z to the 6. Alright, next rule, the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is um, sort of the opposite of the product rule. The product rule, when you multiply, you add. The quotient rule is you're dividing and since you're dividing, you're going to subtract um, the exponents. So with 12a, y to the 10th divided by y to the 9th, 10 minus 9 is just 1, so this is just y. In b, 13 minus 11 is 2, so it's going to be negative 6 squared. And you can simplify that as just 36. Um, here we have two variables, so just take it one at a time. We have eight, x to the 8th and x to the 1st, so 8 minus 1 is 7, so we have x to the 7th power. And 6 minus 5 is just 1, so y to the 1st or just y. Um, when you have plain old numbers here, treat them like you normally would. 9 over 27 simplifies to be 1 third. So let's just take that out as one third, and then a to the fourth divided by a would be a cubed, and b to the seventh divided by b squared would be b to the fifth. Um, all right, again we have this number here, and um, so we're just going to keep that there. And then nine minus three 
a 6. So 5x to the 6. With f, we have um, 12 minus 5, which is 7, so x to the 7th power. And y to the 13th over y to the 7th, so that's y to the 6th. Another geometry example, we have a circle with a radius of 5y centimeters. We want to find its area, and it says do not approximate, so we don't want to make pi 3.14, we just leave it as pi. So the area of the circle is pi r squared, and r is 5y, so we substitute r with the 5y, and we square it. So you can see why we have this example here. Um, it uses the, the um, distributive rule for exponents. So this is going to be pi times 5 squared times y squared. And then 5 squared is 25, so it would be pi times 25 y squared. Now there's something we forgot here. Um, there's the centimeters. So each one had uh, centimeters along the way and um, it was 5y uh, centimeters, so we need to have our centimeters squared here at the end. So you don't have to have it the whole time, but just remember your units at the end. Alright, the last rule for exponents is the zero exponent rule. And that says um, that anything raised to the zero is equal to 1 except for 0. Um, so, for example, 23 to the 0 is 1. 4y to the 0? 1. Negative 2x to the 0 is negative 2 because um, the negative 2 didn't have a 0 power on it, only the x did, so it was like negative 2 times 1 and that equals negative 2. So negative 3 to the 0 would be negative 1, and then 4 to the 0 is 1, and negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Because the negative, um, if it were written as negative 3 to the 0 in parentheses, then that would be positive 1. But that negative sign is outside um, it didn't have an exponent on it, so that just stays. And 3 to the 0 is 1, and then you bring your negative down. Number 16 is a summary of all the rules. Um, so that's a good, like, if you're making note cards, um, those are good things to put on a note card and sort of, like, go over and study. Um, so I just wanted to have those there for you. So let's look at some examples um, combining all the rules that we've learned so far. Alright, so negative 9 squared, we know is just 81. 2 thirds cubed, that would be 2 to the third power over 3 to the third power, which is going to be 8 over 27. All the bases are the same in C, so we're going to add 2 plus 15, that's 17, plus another 1. So it's going to be 8x to the 18th power. 3y to the 4th times negative 5y. Let me get over on the right page here. Um, well, we do the 3 and the negative 5 first, so that's negative 15, and then y to the 4th and y would be y to the 5th. Alright, next one, um, we're going to put our y's together, so it's y to the 17th and z's together, so z to the 15th. Part f, for example f, uh, we have a negative 3 times a negative 7, that's positive 21. 
s to the fifth times s would give you s to the sixth, and t times t to the tenth is t to the eleventh. G is a nice easy one, that's just t to the 55. Uh, H, we need to distribute that 3 to everybody, so that's negative 3 cubed, x cubed, y to the 6, and uh, a to the 9th. But negative 3 cubed should be simplified to negative 27. I um, is the quotient rule, so the 5 is going to come out, and then 9 minus 5 is 4, so we get 5x to the 4th. Part J, we have to distribute the 5 everywhere. Um, so it's going to be 2 to the 5th, A to the 5th, and B to the 5th. So 2 to the 5th is 32, but remember if you don't know that, um, you can just go and use your caret key here, and you'll get it. So let's change that to 32, a to the 5th, b to the 5th. Part k, we have 7 squared, which is 49, minus 7 to the 0, remember anything to the 0 is 1, and then 49 minus 1 is 48. Uh, here we have to distribute the 4 to everybody, and I guess it's example L, even though it's not labeled. Um, so 2 to the 4th, A to the 4th, B to the 4th, all over, 6 to the 4th, Y to the 4th, and Z to the 4th. Um, so we have this 2 to the 4th and this 6 to the 4th. Let's use our calculator to help us with that. So in parentheses, I'm going to do 2 to the caret 4, close those parentheses, oops. All right, so right now, it's, um, I'm glad it did this. It's putting my parentheses up in the exponent, I don't want it there. So I'm going to hit the uh, right arrow, or I'm going to delete it. Hit the right, right <laughs> come on, delete, there we go. Hit the right arrow to get out of the exponent, and then type my parentheses then divided by 6 to the 4th power. And again, right arrow to get out of that exponent mode, and then uh, close your parentheses and hit enter. And I don't want it as a decimal, so hit math, enter, enter, to get it in fraction form. So it's just 1 over 81, so we're going to have a to the 4th, b to the 4th, over 81, y to the 4th, z to the fourth. Hey, you could put that one up in the numerator, but you know, one times anything is just itself. So um, typically, we're not we don't want to put that that one there. Uh, just put the eighty one in the bottom. All right, scientific notation. Hopefully, you've seen before, but um, this is a good place to review it because it does involve deck does involve exponents. So a, po a positive number is written in scientific notation. If it is written as the product of a number a, where a is between 1 and 10, but less than 10, and an integer power of r, or integer power r of 10. Um, so to write a number in a scientific notation, you want to move the decimal in the original number so that the new number has a value that's between 1 and 10. Count the number of decimal places the decimal point is moved in step 1. If the original number is 10 or greater, the count is positive. If the original number is less than 1, the count is negative. Multiply the new number in step 1 by 10 raised to that ex to an exponent equal to the count found in step 2. So um, we see in 20 part A, we have uh, 9 billion, 300 million. It's obviously larger than 10, so our count's going to be positive. 
So we want to write this as a number that's between 1 and 10. Um, so we start at the end of it here, and we're going to hop over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. It took us 9 hops to get to 9.3. So why 9.3? Well, 9.3 is a number between 1 and 10. So we're going to write it as times 10 to that number that we counted. So that would be to the ninth power. And again, it's positive because our number that we started with is it was greater than 10. Whereas in B, our number is less than 10, so our count is going to be negative. So um, we want this number to be 1.94, right? Because that would put it at a number between 1 and 10. To get to 1.94, we went 1, 2, 3 places. So we're going to write this as times 10 to the negative 3. In part C, um, 7 is what we want. So how many places do we have to get to 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now is it positive or negative? Well, it's going to be positive because 700,000 is definitely larger than 10. Um, so to go backwards, you're taking your example 21 here. Take your decimal point, it's saying negative 4, that means go to the left. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left. That's where our new decimal place is. In between there are all zeros. So you see that we end up with point zero 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 nine zero five six. That's how we'd write it in standard form. In example B, it's positive 4, so we're going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's our original number plus an added 0. Um, number 22. In chemistry, Avogadro's number is, is the number of atoms in one mole of an element. Avogadro's number is 6.022141199 times 10 to the 23rd power. Write this number in standard form. So this is a good example of why scientific notation is nice. Because if I count, um, so we're taking it from this scientific notation, we're make, writing it as a regular number. Just to get it, get the decimal point and make it a whole number, I'd have to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's start with this. Zero six point or six zero two two one four one nine nine. That's only eight hops. I still have twenty three minus eight, um, which is fifteen more to go. So we have to add fifteen zeros after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hopefully I got them all. Is that right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah. So if we put... Oh, it's not going to let me. I was going to put little commas in between. Um, so that's what this number looks like in standard form. So this is why we like um, scientific notation because it's much easier to write 6.02 times 10 to the 23 than to write this whole thing out every time we need to use this number. Um, likewise with um, example 23, the amount by which Russia's debt is greater than Mexico's debt is $24 billion. Write this number in scientific notation. So 2.4 is going to be our number between 1 and 10. And then we just have to figure out how many hops that was. So if we start at the end here, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It would be 10 to the 10 power. So that's scientific notation. Now we need to talk about negative exponents. So, um, negative exponents are interesting because you can change them from being negative to positive just by changing where it is. Okay, so
we have a to the negative n is the same as 1 over a to the positive n. Or if you have 1 over a to the negative n, that's the same as just bringing it back up on top and having it be positive. Let me show you what I mean. With 25a, 6 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 6 squared, which is 1 over 36. So that negative, um, whenever you change it from being in the numerator to the denominator or vice versa, the sign of the exponent changes. With b, I can write this as 1 over negative 3 to the positive 5. C. Now the 7 doesn't have an exponent, so we're going to leave the 7 alone, but the x to the negative 3 is going to come down and be x to the positive 3. Whereas in D, the 7 does have a negative, you know, the whole thing has the negative exponent on it, so we're going to bring down the whole thing, so it's going to be 7 cubed and x cubed. Um, 7 cubed is 243. So it's 243 x cubed. And we can go back and do negative um, 3 to the 5th. I don't know that off the top of my head. So we'll use the handy dandy calculator. That's also negative 243. Alright, uh, E. Alright, this one's interesting. We have 1 8 to the negative 2. Well, that negative exponent out on the outside of it means we're going to flip the whole thing over. We're going to make it 8 over 1. And then we're going to change the exponent to be positive. So 8 over 1 is just really 8. So this is just 64. Um, this one's almost the same, except it's got a negative. So that negative is going to stay. We'll have negative 8 over 1 squared. And a negative 8 squared is still positive 64. All right, G. 4 to the negative 1 means 1 over 4 to the first power, or just 1 4. And 4 to the negative 2 means 1 over 4 squared. So this is 1 4 plus 1 16th. And I'll use my calculator to help me add that. So 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 16, enter, math, enter, enter, is 5 sixteenths. Alright, 1 over q to the negative 5, well, since that's a negative exponent, if I bring it up to the top, it's positive 5. With i, I can just flip these guys around and make it q to the 4th over p to the 5th. Because ultimately, with e, um, all your exponent problems, you always want to end with a positive exponent. So if it's negative, bring it, um, take it to a different 4. Like in j, we have y to the negative 3. Uh, if we bring it up to the top 4, and then we'll have y times y cubed, which is y to the 4th. In k, they're both on the wrong 4, because they're negative, so we're going to have x to the 1st power over x to the 4th. And we don't want to leave um, the same bases either. We can use the quotient rule, which says if I'm going to uh, combine these, I subtract their exponents, so it will be 1 minus 4. Well, that's negative 3, so we're back to the same problem here with a negative exponent. How do I get rid of that negative exponent? I bring it back to the bottom 4 and make it 1, x over, x over x, <laughs> 1 over x to the third power. Now, we could have used the quotient rule right from the beginning, um, but it's okay. I wanted to go through and show you... Um, both rules. Alright, with L, we have 1 over 4 squared, 
minus 1 over 4 cubed. Well, that's 1 over 16 minus 1 over 64. Again, we can use our trusty calculator to help us with these fractions. And we get, uh, let's change that decimal by going math, enter, enter. We get 3 over 64. You might be thinking um, that that should have been a negative, but keep in mind with fractions, the smaller the number is in the bottom, um, if the numbers on the top are the same, then you, the, the one that with the smaller number on the bottom is actually the larger number. So 1 16th is actually um, larger than 1 over 64. All right, last two examples here. Uh, 5 to the 0 is 1 plus negative 5 to the 0, which is 1, and that equals 2. All right, with n, the negative 1 doesn't have any power on it, so it just stays there, but the y to the 6, negative 6, needs to come up to the top and be y to the positive 6. All right, here's a couple example, um, well, a few examples combining all of our rules and making sure that we don't have any negative exponents. So with 26a, um, I would go ahead and combine the top so we get y to the ninth. Remember, it's when you multiply the bases, you add over y to the sixth. And then we're going to use the quotient rule, subtract those exponents, and get y cubed. We'll do something similar with b. Uh, y cubed times y is y to the fourth over y to the negative two. Use your um, quotient rule, that's y to the four minus a negative two. But remember when you subtract a negative, you're really adding. So that's four plus two, which is y to the six. Which is good because we don't have any negative exponents that we have to, to deal with. With c, we have x squared all to the eighth power, so that's when you multiply. We get x to the sixteenth over x to the ninth. Sixteen minus nine is seven, so that's x to the seventh power. Uh, with d, we have p over, um, well, let's see, negative three plus negative five is negative eight, so it's p over p to the negative eight. And then use your quotient rule, that's going to be 1 minus a negative 8, which is 1 plus 8, makes it p to the ninth. Let's see, e, uh, the negative 5 doesn't have anybody to go with, so we just leave it. a to the fourth times, uh, oh, there's a negative on the outside there, so that makes it a positive 5, because it's a negative times a negative. And a to the negative fourth and a to the fourth. Well, four plus negative four is zero, so that's a to the zero, which just makes it a one. So we don't need to put that one in, but then negative seven plus three would be b to the negative four. And we can't have negatives, negative exponents in our answer, so this is going to be a five over b to the positive four. We need to bring that b down to the bottom. In F, we want to distribute that negative 2, so we're going to get 4 to the positive 2, x to the negative 10. Can't have a negative exponent, so we're bringing it down to the bottom. And 4 squared is 16, so we have 16 over x to the 10th power. In G, you can use your quotient rule uh, for both of them. Negative 1 minus 3 is going to be 3 to the negative 4. And 4 minus negative 7 will have x to the negative, or 4 minus a negative 7, that's 4 plus 7, so it's actually um, x to the 11th power. Now that 3 to the negative 4 needs to come down. So this is going to be x to the 11th over 3 to the 4th power, which is x to the 11th over 81. Same thing with h. Um, we have negative 5 
minus the negative 2, so that's going to give us 6 to the negative 3, because remember you're adding that 2. Uh, then it's going to be x. We have x to the negative 1 over x to the negative 4. Negative 1 minus a negative 4 is negative 1 plus 4, so that's 3. And then 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So we have some terms that need to go to the bottom. x cubed stays on top. 6 to the negative 3 goes downstairs. And then y to the negative 2 goes downstairs. And then the only other thing is um, figure out what 6 to the third power is, which is 216. All right, I has a negative power on the whole thing, so remember that means we need to flip everybody over. So everybody on the bottom is going to come up top, and everybody on the top is going to come to the bottom. And then it's going to be a positive 3, because once you do the flipping, your exponent now is positive. Oops, a little too far. Um, Alright, so you have x to the, s to the negative 3 over s to the negative 3. Since it's the same exact thing, these really, um, they divide out and they become just 1. That only works if they're exactly the same. And then we have negative 4 minus a negative 2, that gives us r to the negative 2 power. It still raised to this positive 3. And then if we multiply those, we get r to the negative 6. And we can't keep that as a negative, so we bring it downstairs and make it r to the positive 6. All right, j. Uh, j is similar because both of them have a negative exponent on them, so we're going to flip them around. We're going to have xyz squared on top. And then negative 3x squared, y squared all squared on the bottom. We need to distribute that too. So we have x squared, y squared, z squared. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, and then x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Alright, so we can combine the x squared and the x to the fourth. And we can also combine the y squared and the y to the fourth. We'd be using our quotient rule. We know that 2 minus 4 gives us a negative 2. So instead of writing it as x to the negative 2 in the numerator, I'm just going to bring it down to the denominator. c squared is going to stay up there. But instead of writing x to the negative 2 on top, I'm just going ahead and put it, I'm kind of doing two steps in one. And then the same thing with the y. It's going to be a negative 2, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bottom as a positive 2. And that saves us a little bit of work, um, you know, once you get the hang of the negative thing. All right, that's it for um, the week one notes. After watching this, you'll need to go through and attempt the homework exercises and ask questions if you need to.